Hello there, my name is Richard from Silent Peak and a very warm welcome to this On One Effects tutorial in which I will show you how to take a photo like this and make it look something more like this. Now, if you would like to follow this tutorial beat for beat, you can, and you can even download this particular photo from the Silent Peak website. If you are thinking about buying On One Effects, do drop by the Silent Peak store. Here you will find discounts, promo codes, the latest pricing, free trials, and many more on On One Effects and many other photo editing applications. So we're going to begin this edit by going over here and clicking on the crop icon. Now On One Effects comes equipped with an AI crop. And if we click on this AI icon here, we can see that sort of effects will do the work for us. However, if we're unhappy with uh, on one's choice, we can roll back the option here and then do it manually. Now we can do it in free form, which means we can crop the image to any dimension we like. However, I'm gonna keep this on original ratio. That means I maintain the original two by three ratio that uh, it was captured with. So by dragging these anchor points, I can make the image look a little bit tighter around the lighthouse. And also I have this angle level adjustment tool. Now I wanna make sure that this sort of beam above here is straight. This is the part of the photo that I would like to be straight. And I'm gonna click over there. And as you can see, it's, it's already straight enough. So we can click on the blue icon at the top right hand corner. And now our image is cropped. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is white balance. To do this, we're gonna make sure we're on the effects tab here, and we're gonna click on add filter, and we're gonna to go to color enhancer. Now, there's a few things we can do with the color enhancer, but on this occasion, it is simply about adjusting the white balance. And to do this, we're gonna click on the drop tool, and we're gonna sample part of the image that's white. Now, of course, we can do this manually by pulling and pulling up the slider. Um, however, in this case, this image is already pretty accurate in terms of white balance. So we're gonna move on to the next task, which is exposure and contrast. So having set our white balance, our next job is to adjust the exposure. Now to do that, we're gonna take the unusual step of shifting our image to black and white. Now, the reason we do this is because it enables us to adjust our exposure and contrast objectively without the fact that the saturation of the colors in the photo are shifting every time we brighten or darken the image. Here, we can simply look at the image in terms of luminosity, which is to say light or dark, which means we will do an overall better job. So now our image is in black and white, we're gonna add filter and we're gonna to go to tone enhancer. And this should give you some rather familiar tools here. We have the ability to sort of brighten the image or pull back the exposure. We have a contrast option. Highlights will boost the brightest parts of the image or indeed reel them in. Likewise for shadows, we can change the white point and the black point. However, I tend to use the tone enhancer pretty much just for exposure. And if we look at the image, and the histogram, we can see that the image is already pretty well exposed. We have no clipped shadows or highlights. So I'm gonna brighten it up just a little bit, just for the sake of demonstration. And now I'm gonna to move to contrast. Now the easy way to do contrast is with the contrast slider. And it, it works well enough. However, we're gonna do it uh, the better way. So we're gonna click on add filters and we're going to go to curves. So with the curves, we've got this line here. So that's sort of a linear contrast. We're gonna put a dot in the middle for our mid-tones, a dot in the sort of upper middle for our highlights, and one for the shadows. And this gives us independent control over the shadows, mid-tones, and highlights. Now, sort of the artistic intent with this image is a sort of fairly bold, washed out sort of wintry image. So we're gonna sort of play about until we get something that looks just like this. Now, with one eye, we wanna be looking at the image, but we also wanna keep an eye on our histogram. If we get too heavy handed, we can see we can sort of push the histogram over the edge. But due to the nature of this photo's exposure, we've actually got a lot of headwear and a lot of contrast sort of to play with. 
So I could keep going with this, but just for the sake of not letting you guys get bored, I'm going to leave it like that. And now having set our exposure and contrast, we're going to sort of take away the black and white option. Now, if we move down here, we can see the different effects layers that we've placed. And if we click on the blue option, that will disable or re-enable a layer as we see fit. So if you ever do make an adjustment and you're not sure about it, we can just toggle it on and off. Likewise, we can reset it to its default positions or of course, remove the effects layer entirely. Now, hopefully you can see what I mean by changing the exposure by brightening and darkening parts of the image it has influenced the color palette of the photo. So the next step is to address the color. We're going to go to add filter and we're going to go to edit color. Now the edit color is just when we want to sort of adjust one particular color. In this case, I want to deal with this door. Overall, I think the sort of color of the door is a little bit too strong. So all I'm going to do is desaturate the color a little bit and also pull in the sort of brightness of it. And I think that will do. Now I'm going to repeat this process again for the green. So I'm going to go back to add filter, I'm going to go back to edit color. And that now gives me two independent edit color effects layers back to the dropper. And I'm going to click on this yellow area. If I click here, I can basically sort of turn everything else into black and white. And that sort of illustrates my selection. And again, just sort of pull that saturation back and pull the lightness in. I'm simply trying to diminish this so it doesn't stand out quite as much. And there we go. So already looking a little bit better. And if you want to see how far you've come, if you look at your keyboard, you'll see your enter key on the right there. Right above it, there's the backslash. And if you press the backslash button and hold it down, you'll be able to see the sort of out of camera image minus the crop and the image that as it stands right now. So the next thing we're going to do, having sort of got the color, the way I want it to be, is we're going to start now adding sort of visual effects. Now this is where sort of effects sings um, naturally, given the effects name. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go just grunge. Now there's loads of different effects to play with. So my sort of recommendation is that you sort of follow the steps that I've given you up until this point. And at this point we can get creative so we can sort of darken our image with the grunge or lighten it up. Got a bit of a glow option. So I want to give it a bit of ethereal sort of style. So there's the grin grunge filter, pardon me. I'm going to go back to here and I'm going to try a sun flare. Not sure if this is going to work to be honest, but I'm going to give it a go. So I don't want it too warm. And next, I'm going to go to add filter again, and I'm going to put a, a texture. Now there's absolutely tons of textures to choose from. So we're going to go to styles. Uh, let's go to more. And here we can kind of see all the different options available to us. And really, it's just simply about finding something you like the look of. And so far, that's quite good. Yeah, I'm going to settle for that. Now we can adjust the opacity of the layer. So if we sort of pull it in, we can make the effect a little bit more subtle. Change the brightness of the texture. And the next effect I'm going to add is going to be a vignette. So with vignettes, I like to sort of 
dial them to the max just so I can get the shape right and then once I'm happy with the particular shape I can sort of set the brightness to a, a more reasonable level and there we are that is our edit so if we have a look at the image uh, this is what it looks like now this is what the image looked like uh, straight out of camera so before and after you can do your preview with your mouse if that's kind of what you want to do we've got this little slidey option here you can just sort of drag that back and forwards if you want to um, and we've also got this eye option but to be honest, the more that you navigate uh, effects or indeed any photo editing applications, the more I recommend that you sort of find out the keyboard shortcuts and um, that sort of thing, because it makes it easy. Now, if you have yet to try effects, uh, there is a link in the description below to a free trial. If you are considering buying effects or any other photo editing software, do drop by the Silent Peak store. Here you will find many different photo editing applications along with free trials and in some cases promo codes offering exclusive discounts on some of your favourite products. If you like this video, do like, comment, subscribe and so on. You guys know the deal. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Richard from Silent Peak. Have a great day. Bye bye.